Hello folks and welcome back. Now if you've been following this, you'll know that I've been chatting online to a guy called Neil from Back to the Bike on YouTube. It's a really nice bloke, got a brilliant sense of humour, you can tell he bought a BMW and he's been picking my brains just to try and polish his riding up a little bit with a view to taking his Institute of Advanced Motorcycling test in the near future. He's got a lot more competent since he started back in October but his riding could just do with a bit of polishing up to bring him up to that advanced standard. He's been asking my advice on some cornering, positioning, use of the gearbox and observation tips just to sharpen his ride up a bit. There's this vehicle in the junction now looking to come into lane one. In fact, there's two of them there. Right? So we're going to hold lane two, hold 70 miles an hour. If you've watched my previous videos, you've probably heard me question whether dogs are on leads or not before giving them a wide berth. And here's why. Good job the grass virtue is there. The lady's got no control, the lead's let right out, and the dog just runs straight out towards the bikes. Observation is hugely important, and yard by yard as you travel down the road, you're picking up more information all the time to help you plan your ride and to keep you safe. Straight back up to 40. Now, in the bottom of the hill here, at the bottom of most hills, you'll find one of three things begin with our roads, rivers, or railways. And there's a river in the bottom of this one. You can see the signs now for the narrow bridge. So I'm looking through the trees. I can't see anything coming towards me at the moment. But I'm going to keep our speed down in case we have to stop. Nope, looking good. The road's mine. It's a straight line course over it. There's a bit of water going across the road down here. So let's not go charging into this. Let's um, let the oncoming vehicle clear it. Yep, that shows me pretty much what to expect. So speed right off. Just out onto the crown of the road, nice and steady. And I can sit on the dry line as we leave and start to bring the speed back up again. It might not look like it, but there's actually a lot going on here. We can see the road ahead for the next three quarters of a mile, so I'm looking for anything that might affect our ride. I need to know what's going on behind me all the time. If there's any traffic there, how close it is, how fast it's moving and what they're doing. I'm also making continual small adjustments to my speed, my position and my course to make sure I'm in the safest place on the road at all times. I do try to get a bit of everything into these videos, including good places to eat. This was one of the few really nice days in early April and a group of five of us decided to go out for a decent ride and up to Goodwood Racing Circuit to have a bit of lunch. If you haven't been, it's surrounded by brilliant roads and it's got a great cafe that overlooks the racing circuit. One of the things that Neil asked me about was travelling on dual carriageways and motorways and inevitably the subject of filtering comes up regularly. I've got to tell you that personally I'm really not a fan, I don't enjoy filtering and I think it's quite dangerous. If you do have to do it, then keep your wits about you and your speed down low. Remember that when you're passing between two moving lanes of vehicles, there's an awful lot that can go wrong with people either changing lanes or possibly opening doors in front of you. I've seen people filter at some pretty hairy speeds, so if you're going to do it, make sure it's on a road like this one where there's plenty of room, have a really good look around before you pull out and trickle down through between the cars at a low speed so that you're not going to offend anyone and more importantly, you're not going to put them or yourself at risk. In theory, these should be some of our safest roads. After all, they're a one-way street. Apart from normal overtaking, the places you're most likely to come into conflict with other road users are the off and the on slips, and it's around these areas that we need to be really switched on. You need to know who's on behind and what's going on back there all the time on the motorway. Personally, I only ever use mirrors for rear observation, and I don't do shoulder checks on the motorway. And much as I can hear some of you gasping, just think about that one for a second. At 70 miles an hour, you're doing something like 110 feet a second, and in the couple of seconds that it takes to do your shoulder check, you've just done 100 yards without looking where you're going. If it's busy, 
I don't feel safe taking my eyes off the road for that amount of time. Looking to see if we can keep the vehicle moving, which yes we can. A little bit of gravel on the hard deck, so just bear it in mind as you go around. Most of the surface now is reasonable, it's, I think it's had a good wash with all the heavy rain. So this is where we're coming off, just do a look around the bike before we leave, signal to leave. Now I would say get you some speed up, but this uh, particular one has got a very, very short onslaught. So I'm just having a good look over my right shoulder, looking up onto the dual carriageway, just to see what's what at the moment and where we can come out. Couple the bikes now. I think I might join on the back of this. There we go. I see some of the Harleys. Do you like Harleys? So you can see, I've sort of joined there and right there in a nice stagger. So I've joined in with that stagger so that I'm not messing them about. It gives me a good view as well, we can maintain speed together. Right, now I'm going to be looking to go back to one, and I'm thinking in front of this Range Rover is looking good. So thank you very much for your company, gentlemen. Taking the next off. So we'll just put a signal on to leave. We start to roll speed off. Just bring it gently, gently down, and we can see there's a, a filling station here. Looking past the filling station, there's a vehicle stopped on the main road. I can see brake lights, there's obviously some drivers in the car. Uh, it looks like. He's turned off, I think, into the cafe there. So we're now going to turn right towards Burley, down underneath the A31. vehicles coming in and we're just going to roll power off now. We've got three vehicles ahead of us that have to overtake the cyclist. So just rolling the power gently down. Just sit back and let the situation clear up. Don't go charging in and then you end up having to brake. You also encourage traffic right up behind you. So we're just going to sit back, leave a decent gap so that we can see what's going on and just let the situation clear out. So I've just come down through the gearbox. A nice um, little bit of straight. There's one oncoming vehicle, so we're just going to hang fire. Before we all take the cyclist, we're getting lots of room. Straight back up to 40. So we're going to have a look, see if we can do the overtake across this bend here. We're only doing 50 miles an hour. Once I can see the road surface, yep. Shortest route across the bend. Just roll off alongside, let the momentum carry you through. Very nice, neat overtake. Nice and steady around the bends, prepared to give up for position for safety if we need to. See just a couple of little damp patches on the road. So on the other side there, lots of mud, but that's not so good if you come around the bend on a bike. And so we've got the traffic calming measures halfway up this straight, so no rush to get there. There's another car coming down. We'll just let him come through, or a couple of cars here. So I'll just run the speed off, no need to brake, let them come through, and we don't have to stop. And looking ahead then, as far into the distance as you can, and you can see traffic lights on probably temporary roadworks. So the lights are green at the moment. So just roll the speed down. Because they've just changed, this is not going to be a momentary stop. We're going to probably be here for a, a little while. So you'll see I'm going to select neutral. I've got the handbrake on if you like. Front brake is on. And you see I haven't stopped right where it says 
red light shows wait here. I've stopped back a little bit and the reason for that is that I can take a very nice smooth course when I pull away straight out through the traffic lights rather than having to go sharp right and then bank left to get the bike straight again. We just do a nice smooth pull away, nice straight course. So I'm anticipating the light should change any second now. Here we go, so quick look behind, all clear behind. So, so I'm in about the nice smooth course to pull away. No real steering involved at all, so it's pretty much just pulling away in a straight line. So as we clear the lights, straight back up to 30. As we come past the garage, just have a good look across the forecourt, make sure nothing's coming out. Okay, so we can now bring speed up, we're going to be joining a 70 mile an hour road. A little bit of acceleration, there's a lorry on behind and um, just that little bit of acceleration will just get me out between the two lorries. Straight to 70. And to top gear just to relax the engine. So once we're clear of the lorry, I've got a nice view of them in my side mirror here. I can just bring the bike back into lane one. Come down the dual carriageway then and we reach the 300 yard marker. I'm just going to signal to the left to leave. Uh, when you put the signal on nice and early, no, certainly no later than the 200 yard marker. You can see we're getting quite tight to the junction now. Once we've left, cancel the signal. And I'm just going to gently roll power off and let the speed run down. One of the things I hope to achieve with all my videos is to show you how much you can give yourself the heads up on what's coming next, rather than just bimbling along and dealing with whatever bumps into the front of the bike, that with good observation and positioning, you can get lots of information to help you plan your ride and keep yourself safe. Some of the information will keep you out of trouble, but some of it we can use to our advantage for maintaining speed and to plan and execute those safe overtakes. If you're looking to do any sort of advanced training, hopefully these videos will give you some insight into the type of ride that the observer will be looking for you to produce. Safety of course is top of the list, but they'll be looking for you to demonstrate good positioning and good observation to produce an overall smooth, safe and flowing ride. For you Neil, your riding is coming along really nicely. You're gradually learning now how much flexibility you've got on the engine and gearbox and to trust the bike. If you keep working on your observation, your positioning and your cornering, and you'll find everything else will drop into place, but it's really coming together well. And sadly, folks, it's that time again. Well, it's not really. It's just the sun's out, and I'm thinking, do I want to sit here yapping to you lot or take the bike out? Yep, hate longer buys. Bye.